Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let me get a little more comfortable there. Today is still Thursday, May the 13th, and it's 4.35 p.m. I have a couple of, I think there's two, maybe more, but um, three in all. I'm going to do three of the messages from the Lord that were given through the email I get from Dawn. Okay, one of them was from a lady that you normally see hers on Prophecy 444, or is it 444 Prophecy? Yeah, dot com, that, that website that has all the prophecies on it. Um, her name's Victoria Ang. But first I want to do Small Straws in a Soft Wind by Marsha Burns. It's not very long. But it, but it is clearly uh, something we need to hear. Your strength and well-being will not come from world conditions. When you choose to live in my kingdom, you changed your allegiance from earth to heaven, from flesh to to spirit do not put your belief in men or let me add or the things they offer to keep you well and what they can do for you put your belief in me the verse she gives is John 18:36 Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Okay, I thought of another one and pulled it up on Blue Letter Bible. It's Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Now this is the NASB uh, 95 version. But the word wealth has a footnote that says, or mammon, ma no, menonas, for Aramaic, mammon. And, and see, it was spelled M-A-M-O-N, but then in parentheses, it's M-A-M-M-O-N, which is how you see it in King James, I believe. And then it goes, for example, wealth, etc., personified as an object of worship. Yes, how many people worship their wealth? Okay, so that was that one. And this next one is titled, You Were Given a Choice, dated May 10th. 2021, given to Victoria Ang, word from the Lord. My children, the hour is so very late. Have you released all things in this world to me? Or are you still holding on to things not of me? Have you learned to put me above all else, relying on me fully in every situation and plans you make, asking me for guidance and direction? Many of you are still holding on to idols in this world, making those very things your God. And idols can be so many things. 
It can be your favorite game. It can be television. It can be something you collect. It could be cooking. It could be eating. It could be sports. The need to run for an hour every day. You make your body your God. You've got to do it or you won't feel right or whatever. Just think about it. Why do I do this? Why do I do that? Okay. Do you still make as much time for God? That's, that's a good question to ask. Okay. It goes on to say, Repent, I say. Come away from the ball and chain that keeps you weighed down. Not being able to move forward in your relationship with me. Stop relying on yourself to set you free. Examine your heart. Is it a heart after my own? Are you sincere in the asking of me to set you free? Or are your lips just mouthing words that have no meaning? You cannot deceive me, my children. I long to help those that come before me with a sincere, humble heart. You cannot hear my voice when you allow all the distractions of this world to take front and center in your life. I am a jealous God. I want your time. I want to establish a pure relationship with each one of my children. Many give me leftovers or mere crumbs from their time and life. No relationship can blossom with that type of mindset. My hand is extended to lead you. It is your choice to take hold of my hand or turn the other way. My heart is so very heavy because I have sent out so many warnings, made so many attempts to share my love with you, only to be rejected and pushed to the side so many will perish and will not spend eternity with me and for that my heart grieves you were given a choice the scriptures um, are six, Isaiah 61 verse 1 Exodus 34 14. Apparently he wanted you to look them up yourself. I'm going to put him all, this all in the description box. Hopefully it'll all fit. So you can go back over it and read it yourself and look these up. Deuteronomy 6.15. Proverbs 3.5-6. I know that one by heart. It's one of the first ones I ever learned. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. That's what I said over and over and over and over and over when there was a tornado about to, I didn't know, it was just a bad storm. I really didn't know it was a tornado. The park ranger forgot to get us out of there. We got everybody out but me and my husband. I'm sure it was for a testimony reason. God did it on purpose. <laughs> and all I could say, instead of, I plead the blood of Jesus over this tent, and I plead the blood of Jesus over my husband and myself, all I could say was that proverb over and over and over and I was just laying there in my sleeping bag like this saying it I trust in the Lord with all thy heart <laughs> and uh, anyway we survived <laughs> and the park ranger couldn't believe it he, he was his mouth was like dropped to the ground when he saw us there and our stuff was still there and we were still there 
<laughs> he said a tornado dropped down about less than a mile as bird flies from here. But he was just glad we were okay. Anyway, the next one is Jeremiah 33.3. I've heard of that, but I don't know it. I have to look that up myself. Job 33.14. All right, now I'm skipping the next one because I don't really get it. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm going to go on to the last one, which is dated May 13. And it says, I have heard your prayer and cries for help concerning hurts and wounds from the past. I have sent those to you to help. Do you see them? Recognize those that I have placed in your life to bring healing to your wounds. Allow the ones who have been assigned by me to help you overcome the deep scars that hold you back. Let me repeat that. Allow the ones who have been assigned by me to help you overcome the deep scars that hold you back. I am your healer and have sent my agents to you for that purpose. Isaiah 61 verses 1 and 2 in NASB says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. And that was given to Jonas Bolin. Now, most of you know that I'm in like a, a, it's called Google Meet now. It's like a Zoom meeting every night with Grafted in Team Jesus. I'm on the team. I Every now I get a nugget of, hey, that means such and such. And <laughs> so I guess I contribute, but um, the point is, I, Kathy and her husband and one of the ladies on the team, they do the heart healing and deliverance. And I believe that's the verse on their website. Isaiah 61, 1 through 2. It sounds familiar. I believe it is. Anyway, their mission is to bring the good news to the afflicted and to set the captives free. You see, what that is all about is every time a child, even in the womb, goes through trauma, even teenagers, even adults, you go through a bad car accident, your mind, in order to deal with it, it's especially true of abuse, even just a verbally abusive parent. After a while, you, a child's mind has to deal with it so they can live. It's like a God built into us the ability to do this but at some point it has to be dealt with for you to be healthy he wants to circumcise your heart and what Kathy and Dan do is they get you on a personal zoom meeting so she can see your face and sometimes Dan is there sometimes Susan's there but They've trained in this for 20 years, but even more so lately. 
on how to pull your demons up and out. Demons of fear and anxiety and other kinds are what go into those little black boxes, she calls them, in your heart with that trauma. Could be demons of sexuality, promiscuous, uh, what is that one, Jezebel? all kinds it can be it doesn't have to be just fear or anxiety but usually as an adult you will have trouble getting over either a, a bad habit a certain sin you will find yourself doing over and over even though you pray and you pray and you beg God Help me to stop doing this. I don't know why I keep doing it. I love you, God. I love you, Jesus. Why do I keep doing this? You may have a heart healing issue that you have shoved to the recesses of your mind. And it's pushed down so far in your heart that you can't remember the trauma or that even that it even was such a bad trauma but you contained it and that demon can cause you it could be a, a spirit of lies your a piff a parent lied to you all the time uh oh we're going to go to um so and so's house to visit this weekend i promise i promise cuz they're always busy and we're weekend comes i'm so sorry honey i have to finish these papers say hey, your mom's a lawyer and they are always busy and instead of just saying look i'm always busy i am so sorry what can i do what can we do together you know work it out if you have to hire a, a babysitter that you trust to take your child to the park, do it. But, but it's kind of too late for that now. But what I'm saying is, let's say your parent continually lied to you. You may have a spirit of lying in that little box that kept being hurt. And to deal with those hurts, you just made the box bigger and bigger or more and more boxes it just depends on the situation that's what they help you to break open and get that demon out and then you're able to stop lying do you see if that's your problem that could be your problem that you love God and you want to live right, but you know the Bible says all liars will be thrown into the lake of fire and you don't want to go to the lake of fire. So it's like, why can't I quit this? I suggest you send an email to grafted in team Jesus 222 at gmail.com. Write to Kathy. Tell her what's been going on enough that she'll get an idea of what it is and she'll set up a time or she may write back and you may write back and forth a couple times it just depends on what you say the more you say the better the more she'll know about you i'm going to put that in the description box all right i'm so glad that this came up I'm going to end it here. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video. I'm so glad this came up. I plead the blood of Jesus over all of us, each and every one of us, and our devices and our internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I will talk to you later.